Hi everyone, I survived my holiday hibernation and I'm in Thailand continuing my trip to circumnavigate the globe. But I wanted to make a quick video for everyone. My mom passed away recently and she was always proud to talk about our Irish heritage, something I talk about a lot on this channel. But my heritage is anything but simple. In fact, from family oral history and historical research, my family isn't just from Ireland. We're the royal family of Ireland. So don your favorite street bowling shoes and follow me down the rocky road to Dublin as I explain to you why I should be the crown prince of Ireland. All right, so the first thing we need to address is the elephant in the room, the room I'm in. I'm a lower class middle anthropologist from the US lying on my bed in a hostile dorm room, not a throne room in a royal palace. And uh, that's fair. <clears throat> so if I'm supposedly the crown prince of Ireland, then why am I not living it up in a castle somewhere? Well. There's about a thousand years of history we need to talk about to answer that question. During the era of the Nordic invasions of the British Isles, 9th century CE, Ireland was made up of several small kingdoms, including some who favored the Norse and some more anti-Norse factions. <clears throat> In 846, there came the first High King of Ireland, Malachi MacMulroney which is the Anglicanized version of his name, so I don't confuse the hard of hearing in the subtitles. Macmill Rooney was only a symbolic king, though, and his dynasty didn't really have any hard political power. Instead, it would be the Munster, Southern Ireland, King Brian Boru, who would, through a combination of warfare and politics, unite all of Ireland under a single crown. High King Brian Boru would establish the O'Brien dynasty, which would rule Ireland for 120 years until Norman English invasions toppled the dynasty. After that, kingdoms still independent from Norman rule would produce monarchs who claimed to be the High King of Ireland, but once again had no real authority over the several kingdoms of the island. So if the last true dynasty <clears throat> of the High Kingdom of Ireland was the O'Briens, then where are they now? The last O'Brien to sit on the High Throne of Ireland was Murdo O'Brien, who died without an heir. The throne should have then gone to his older brother Teague, but Teague's line died with his grandson Concubar, sending the heirs to the throne to Murdo's younger brother Dermot. Dermot had three sons, the eldest of which had one son who died without an heir, aka a royal deadline, and the youngest son had only one son who died without an heir. The middle son, Turlo, had two sons. The eldest produced no children, and the second produced three sons, only the last of which had kids. That son was Duncan O'Brien, <clears throat> who had one son who then had two sons. The youngest grandson of Duncan, Brian O'Brien, had two sons who both had dead and royal lines. The eldest son of Duncan, however, Turlo O'Brien, had three sons. The oldest and youngest both died without heirs, but the middle son, Mortimer O'Brien, kept the line alive. Mortimer's youngest son died without an heir, but his oldest son had three children. The oldest died without an heir. The middle son had one son who died without an heir, but the third son, Turlo, lucky name, kept the light alive. This Turlo, who we'll call Turlo III, had three sons. The youngest two died without heirs. Teague kept the line alive. Teague's oldest son, Connor, produced a long line, reaching to the death of the heirless Charles O'Brien in 1774. That meant that the line went to the second son of Murrow O'Brien's line. At that time, it consisted of three brothers, William, James, and Lucius Henry. William died without an heir, and both of James's grandsons died without heirs. 
So LFG, Lucius Henry. Today, there are only two direct descendants of the O'Brien line going back to Lucius Henry. The main branch is headed by a man called Connor Miles John O'Brien, the heir to the line of Brian Boru, with the heir apparent being his second cousin, Connor John Anthony O'Brien. When Ireland gained independence in the 1920s, there were talks of bringing the monarchy back, and the O'Brien family was a major name put forward to be the renewed royal family. If that had happened, the King of Ireland today would be High King Connor Miles John O'Brien. So where do I fit in? Enter my mom, Teresa Marie Kennedy. Remember when I talked about Brian Boru? Boru was not actually the true King of Munster. Brian's father was King Kennedy of Munster. And his middle son, Math, the eldest son died without an heir, was supposed to be heir to Munster. And guess which family are the descendants of Math? The Kennedys. After Brian Boru defeated the Vikings at the Battle of Clontarf, his older brother conveniently got kidnapped and executed by a rival family, and the Kennedy family fled in exile to avoid any other convenient kidnappings. They would adopt the surname O'Kennedy, Irish for grandson of Kennedy, which was Math's dad. They fled to County Clare, where the family would become the royal family of Ormond, between the 11th and 16th centuries. In fact, while the O'Briens were toppled by the Normans, the O'Kennedys maintained a strong resistance against the English, particularly their rival royal family, the Norman English Butlers. At one point, the O'Kennedys even led a coalition of royal families, which included the O'Briens, to steal a butler castle in modern-day Nana. This is where things get more complicated. Eventually, the English did conquer all of Ireland, and royal families were intertwined. For example, English Prime Minister and Napoleonic war hero Arthur Wellesley, a.k.a. the Duke of Wellington, was the product of combined Irish and English royal lines. He's also my sixth great-grandfather. And it's shortly after Wellington that my family had its immigrant era. Sometime during the 1910s, my great-grandfather came to the U.S. as a very young child with his Irish parents. But there's no official record of them entering Ellis Island. That's because, and this is where my family oral history comes in, they were part of an organized crime family back in Ireland and wanted to escape to create a safe future for the family. There are no records of them at Ellis Island because there was an official witness protection sort of agreement between the governments of the U.S. and the U.K., who still owned Ireland, to find my ancestors a safe new home in America. In the 1920s, Ireland fought a bloody war for independence from Great Britain and won. That created a logistical nightmare for the UK, as several lords owned lands and titles in both Ireland and England, in Wales and Scotland, etc., etc. So while my family was still under a witness protection, they were still somehow under the radar of the government of the UK because an official representative of the British government tracked them down in St. Louis, Missouri, with orders to come back to the UK to settle the new land dispute as representatives of the Kennedy line. The problem was there was this whole Great Depression going on, and the British government wouldn't pay for the steam liner to take my great-great-grandfather to the UK and back for this dispute. Instead, my second great-grandfather signed away his right to a voice in any of the land disputes, and my family officially lost its status as Anglo-Irish nobles. So where does that leave me? Well, there were essentially two branches of my branch of the Kennedy family, those from my great-uncle Butch and those from my grandfather Joseph, who I'm named after. My great-uncle Butch actually founded our family's annual St. Patrick's Day Festival, which is like a Royal Kennedy's annual family reunion. And while Butch is no longer with us, his descendants are happy and healthy. Hi, second cousins. My grandfather's line, however, is where I come in. 
Assuming nobody under the Butch line desires the throne, that would leave the Joseph line left. My mom was the youngest of four children, and I'm her youngest child. Her oldest brother has one son who has no plans to have kids, royal dead end, and her second eldest brother has no kids. Her older sister has two kids, one of which has a daughter. And then my oldest brother has two daughters. Hi, nieces. And then there's me. So if the Irish ever did bring back the royal family, I would make the claim that Brian Boru was the illegitimate heir to a throne that belonged to his older brother, who also, by the way, took part in the unification of Ireland. I'm a descendant of Math, son of Kennedy, descendant of the Kennedy line recognized by the UK at the time as the legal representatives of the O'Kennedy family, and the last grandchild of the Joseph Kennedy line who was still Catholic which is kind of important for being a king of Ireland. So as Joseph, son of Teresa, daughter of Joseph, I hereby stake my claim to the title of Crown Prince of Ireland.